If you're someone who likes to start conversations with, did you know, well, we're about to up your roster of Canadian tidbits. As we celebrate Canada's 150th today, we're taking in a few of our nation's claims to fame. And this extends far beyond hockey and poutine and Blackberry technology, though all three of those things do appear in the pages of this brand new book. It's called Ingenious, How Canadian Innovators Made the World Smarter, Smaller, Kinder, Safer, Healthier, Wealthier, and Happier. And who better to help pull all these stories together than the Governor General of Canada, His Excellency David Johnston. He is here with us in studio this morning. Excellency, thank you so much for being here. Ben, it's great to be with you, and that's a whole new idea for a new trivial pursuit. Huh? I 100% I, I agree. Let's a get... Montreal invention. <laughs> now, right uh, in your neighborhood. In my neighborhood, my neck of the woods. Now, first of all, one of the longest titles of any book that we featured on the show, but well-deserved. You called it, you refer to innovation and not invention. Why that distinction? Innovation is simply making things better. Invention is kind of discovering things, Ben. If I wanted to be really pedantic, the Latin for... Uh, Invention comes from inventory to come at or to arrive at, and it's seeing something that is already there but crystallizing it. Whereas uh, innovation comes from innovare, which means uh, to uh, refresh or to alter. Mm. So typically it's taking an existing idea and making it better. And innovation is often a continuous process of a series of steps, and it's often back and forth from the ultimate product and the idea of reshaping it. And everybody can do it. And everybody can do it, so that it's accessible to all. Tell me... How did you decide which innovations made it into the book and which ones stayed on the outside? That Perhaps was, that you saved for the sequel. That was really tough. We began this as a 150-year birthday project, so it was going to be 150 stories of innovation. And we had a number of collaborators, network partners, like National Research Council, and we were just overwhelmed by the number. And so we finally drew the line at 297 because <laughs> the book was getting too yeah. thick. <laughs> but the sequel be, we've got a website called innovationculture.ca, and particularly for children, I hope they'll plug into that and say, here are the ones you've missed, or mm. here's the ones that we're doing in my neighborhood. Well, let's talk about some of the ones that you like, because uh, this book features everything from the odometer to the wonder bra. What are some of your favorites? Well, one of my favorites is the life jacket, because it came from our Inuit people, actually, pre, uh, pre-colonial times. And it was actually designed to deal with coldness in the water. It was seal skin that, mm -hmm. that covered the torso uh, to prevent it from getting cold if you, if you went in, in, in the water. And, of course, that's been handed down. And, of course, the canoe and the kayak that also come from, from pre-colonial times, which were methods of transportation when water was such an important route of transportation. On the social innovation side, one of my favorites is, uh, is uh, from me to we, the we days that uh, Craig and Mark yes, indeed. Have pioneered were you probably have been in. Uh, I hosted the very first one. Wasn't it an Is experience? that in your book? Yeah, it, indeed. Wasn't, <laughs> it, wasn't it an experience? Yeah, amazing. Uh, what, were you really in uh, the Air Canada Centre or the Canadian Tire mm -hmm. Centre uh, or the Bell Centre in the uh, hockey arena? It keeps arena growing and, around the world. It's not yeah, just in yeah, Canada. It's 12 or 13 mm -hmm. cities in Canada now, and I think two or three in the U.S. and one in London, yeah. England, where you bring 20,000 high school teenagers there for a day on volunteerism, and they're there because they have been distinguished in their volunteer activities. Oh, it's Nifty. wonderful. Well, let's go through, let's do a flyover of some of the other aspects in this book. Thomas Edison did not invent the, light, the electric light bulb. And the light bulb is one of my special ones in the book because it was invented in Canada. In fact, patents were taken out, but we couldn't finance it. And Edison, being the kind of person he was, actually bought the patents and developed it. But it's important to me because the light bulb is an important metaphor. How often we said the light went on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how you do that. Exactly. Or I can do that. Um, so it, as a technical advance, it's important. But also as a metaphor of how we do things better, it's attractive. And we can thank Nova Scotia for the odometer. Is that true? We can, yes. 1854. I can't give you details on all of these stories, but I can on this one. Because it was a way of putting uh, a set of uh, plates in a kind of a, a circular arrangement with the first plate attached to the axle of a cart. Okay. And as that axle turned, that first circle turned, and when it had reached a number of uh, units, say 100, it would trick the next tip, trip the next circuit mm -hmm. and the next circuit, and uh, all of a sudden you could actually record your mileage long before the automobile for a cart. Wow. Well, something that affects us uh, probably just as deeply these days is, is the blue box, the recycling box. And we learned from this that the, the color is no accident. 
that comes from another neck of the woods where I spent 12 wonderful years after Montreal Waterloo. So it's a Kitchener Waterloo invention, uh, the 60s as I recall. And the, the color blue was chosen for a couple of reasons. One is that apparently it deals with sunlight better than other colors. Perhaps it's ultraviolet light, I, I've forgotten. Uh, but uh, it doesn't melt or doesn't decompose as quickly. And of course, blue is a very environmentally friendly color. It invites us in to do something about recycling. And what a terrific invention for the world. Uh, let's talk about one of the innovators, not just the innovations. But Elizabeth Arden is Canadian. I didn't know this. And I also didn't know that she changed her name. And began life from Woodbridge uh, with her father, I presume a farmer, bringing uh, vegetables into the St. Lawrence Market, just a stone throws away from here. Um, this would be the late, about 1890, 1900. And because she was interested in chemistry in a later life, she began to develop uh, makeup, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, women could use, which would not be invasive or difficult for their face. And all of a sudden, created a whole industry and changed her name to Elizabeth Arden because she thought that was a better way to sell cosmetics. Governor General David Johnston, thank you so much for being here. The book is called Ingenious. I often joke that Canadians, uh, before we give them a passport, they have to learn about every Canadian, every famous Canadian in the world. I think they got to read this book, too, before we ship them off. Tell the stories, Ben, and we make things better for everyone. Thank you so much for being here. This Terrific. Week. Thanks.